right, we've got Stevie Johnson and Ryan Fitzpatrick sitting down with us for today's episode. Two former Bills players from the early 2000s. Guys, thanks for being with us. I appreciate you coming all the way out here to this elementary school that we're in to tape a podcast. So we're going to start there. Why are we here today? Do you want to fill us in? Yeah, well, well, let me start by saying we heard about the podcast. <laughs> we heard this was episode three, and we had the we opportunity had to, to be on it. So we both flew in to be here with you. But exactly. Stevie, why Amazing. else are we here? Amazing. Yeah, and then we wanted to introduce our, our new book, mm -hmm. The Legend of Fist Magic, Mr. Nomadic, to the, to the school and uh, to the world. You know, So that's what we wanted to do, teach and provide uh, sparks for these kids. That's amazing. Yes, we had a school assembly here today. So these guys were reading to a couple of preschool classes, some three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and then we finished it off with a big school assembly of about 300 kids screaming their faces off. And Ryan was able to tame them all because you have seven kids. Yeah, I had some techniques to get them to quiet down a little bit because was, they were a rowdy crowd. I was struggling so hard. Well, they were so excited about... Stevie being here, they're so excited about the Bills game coming up, mm -hmm. the book. So we just, we had to try some techniques and luckily I'm well versed so mine work. Yeah, you, you, you rallied them up and then you brought them down and got them up and it worked. Yeah. It was amazing. It was a really, really fun afternoon here. So this is why we are taping this in a school room. Uh, pretty interesting background for this, but you know, we love it. We go where the people are and you guys are here today. Exactly. So that's why we're here. When was the last time you two were together, aside from this meeting? I want to know about that. Uh, maybe 2012. I was thinking we probably, we probably played against each other when you were in San Fran or no. LA, mate. we never did. No. So like probably 2012. Yeah. It's been so the last year you guys played together in Buffalo. It's been a really long time. Yeah. It's been a long time. He's been he's I mean he just retired so he's been active. I know. I, yeah. you know, I've been doing whatever I've been doing. 17 you know, years. Been, I will say though Nine this teams. is like legit like a wave of emotion came over me when I saw Stevie today because it has been that long. But so this he contacted me and said hey we're thinking about writing this children's book. I said, that is, that's awesome, do whatever you need to do. And it just so happened that we're here for Thursday Night Football. The book finished up, we got to read it to some of these kids. So there were a lot of stars that aligned to like bring us back together. And yeah. like, and then, Stevie's my dude, yeah. man. It never, it's like we never miss time anyway. You know? So Still since it's cool. been like more than 10 years, you said it feels like you never miss time. Is yeah. this like a connection that you guys have with each other? And I'm, I'm sure it's not with every single person that you played with, but there are certain people that whenever you see them, it's like, oh, I feel like I can pick up where we left off. Indeed, definitely, definitely. And, and it started like in the book, you know, at the airport. You know, we met at the airport randomly and we just happened to be this 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 dynamic duo that we end up uh, creating here in Buffalo, it, it, it was special, you know. That was a special time. So the book that you're talking about, you read to the preschoolers today, and it's a book about Ryan coming to Buffalo, playing for the Bills, what he did here, what you guys did together, and then what he did in his NFL career. Was that your first time hearing the book today when Stevie was reading it, it to the kids? It was my first time hearing the book. And again, like, a little bit emotional because... Like it was, it was his version of like my story and how he saw it and us as teammates and like the things that he thinks and feels about me. So yeah. I can't even look at him right now. But like it was just <laughs> like come special, good. man. Tears it was a really, cool that was like there. a, it was a special moment, A, for us to see each other, but then to get together and to hear you read the book to the kids. Like yeah. it's one of those things I can't wait to share it with my wife and kids because it's going to mean a lot to them too. Indeed. So thank you. Indeed. What's that, that's what's up, man. And it was just, that was the spark that we wanted to do for you, for your family. And, um, you know, coming from the creators, Charlie Roberts, shout out to Charlie mm -hmm. Roberts and Zach McKay for helping us out with the illustrations, making everything look so accurate They're and spot cool. on. Yeah. People may not know what you look He's like under the beard. beards, but yeah. sometimes. <laughs> so that's, that's going to be another rare thing they get to see fits without a beard, yeah. you know, they, they get the book. So <laughs> it, it's, it's pretty neat, though, how everything came together. Though. It was pretty special. Well, we're going to get into that connection that you guys had on the field in just a bit. But first, we got to talk style because you guys both have it. And I, I brought some some pictures with me today that we can kind of go through it all. So you ready? Okay. okay. So I pulled some looks and this was kind of just me being a stalker on Instagram. So um, 
I've got some looks for you guys, and we'll start with fits first. And this is this is you on the desk. So this is desk life. Okay. We know you are an analyst pre and post game for Amazon Prime Thursday Night Football. That's why you're here because the Bills are playing the Tampa Bay Bucks on Thursday night, and you've had I th I think some some awesome looks on set. You got the loud designs, but Stevie, I want you to to tell me what you think. Yeah, I, I like it. It's already fresh. It reminded me of, um, you know, I, I did something with JJ, and JJ actually had a, a similar uh, sport coat. That, so we've got the like a red velvet sport velvet, coat yeah. on. We've yeah. got an H for Harvard. That was that is that's actually Liza's Harvard letter sweater from college. Wow! But that we were doing a game show, and it was Cal versus Stanford, and I was one of the judges. Uh, so that's my judging look right there, but. Nice. I can see you like. I think with all these looks, maybe could I see you pulling them off? Like, obviously, is you that could what pull you think off, when you when you get dressed? Stevie for... would be able to pull that off for sure. Yeah. I like that. I like can that. Stevie that's... pull this off? Yes, I'm gonna wear it tonight. Yeah, yeah that's a question. <laughs> would Stevie wear this? Yes. Okay. What would Stevie do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's here's oh, the, here's yeah. the next one. We've got like a salmon suit. Come on, you like that? That's, that's and we've different. got some a that's, detailed that's shirt underneath. Right All right, so like I would never. How? A, like I always choose my shirts. The suits I would never choose that color in a million years. But I got a lot of compliments so on that good. one. Yeah, and he got the fade too. He got to go to the, all the way to the barber. You know, to the barber uh, cut. You know, you got to have it everything everything coming together. And you see how he's subtle with the with the red on mm -hmm. the shirt. It's not mm -hmm. too much, not too much. It, it matches. It works. It goes. Yeah. Stevie approved. It's yeah. Stevie it's approved. It's Stevie approved. Yeah, that's fine. So you pick the shirts. That's fine. Yeah, I pick I pick the shirts for the most part, and then they'll try to match the the suits up. But yeah, that one I was I was unsure of. But it's like are the shirts already in the closet? Uh, no, a lot of them are not. Okay. A lot of them. Okay. A lot of them I'm picking from. Okay. The whole squad look nice on there. I know. There. You yeah. guys, you guys, look nice. yeah. it works. It yeah. works on the desk. Oh, that shirt. Come on now. Yeah, I like that shirt. That's how you do it. So yeah. now like we that. have, like okay. we have like a dark green suit jacket, and then we have a shirt underneath. If you're picking the shirt, this shirt has all the different colors and patterns I think that you could ever wish for. Yeah, that's Versace. I look like Versace. Yeah, I think it's Robert Is Graham, it? I think. Oh, but Graham. it was like it had texture to it, too. I may not have matched it with the suit jacket you know, but yeah, like, it don't matter because all of this is like mixed match you just wear whatever on, on over the top That's and also cool. what i learned from you over the years is it really doesn't matter what you're wearing it's about how you carry yourself indeed so, indeed okay so uh the next one how are we carrying ourselves in uh this press conference where you decided to steal some teammates clothing now that now that right there you know how people feel about the birth of bill's mafia yeah. and how I, that was the birth of Fit style. Fits a fits, style. A fits. Yeah. Fits. Yeah, it really, that, like, joking aside, like, that one, that kind of shifted. So this is this is the famous of look of the chain, mm -hmm. the sunglasses, the sweatsuit zipped down, no yeah. shirt on underneath. But the quick story of that, which you probably heard, but DJack walked in before the game. Deshaun and I was Jackson. Like, okay, DJack, if we win this game, I'm going to put that on. Like, because he looked so cool, and <laughs> yeah. I knew I would look so ridiculous. I'm like, how do you get away with wearing clothes like that? So then he made so sure. So that was that the I, birth yeah. of the style. Ooh. And I want to, I want to, you know, bring Stevie into this conversation as it's well, crazy. because Stevie, you have it's the fits so on. You've got one on right now. And Ooh. this is like an all black look. I went through your Instagram and I pulled, I pulled some pics because yeah. you've got a bunch of them. And this is ni a nice all black fit. You got the coat, you got the pants, you got the shirt, Indeed. you got the hat. You know what? And Where's you know, your style come from? Uh, just being comfortable. You know, just being comfortable, whatever, whatever I think feels comfortable to me, whether it was matching or not. This mm -hmm. was a simple look. Um, if it's comfortable, I'll, I'll rock it. Somebody would be like, hey, that looks ugly, or somebody would be like, hey, it's different. You know, maybe I'll try it. I want to spark mm -hmm. that mind, you know. But here's, like, I see this, and I'm like, okay, black pants. Uh, I put these black pants on today, and I was like, I don't think those are cool, but all right, I'll throw <laughs> them on with a black shirt, and it's got, like, eight buttons. And the top one is done. That's more mm -hmm. of like a Cali thing, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, he's wearing like a turtleneck. Is it a turtleneck you see that? underneath? Is you it see a scarf? It does look okay. like a turtleneck underneath. And then he's got, he's got that deal with the hat and the glasses. Like a trench coat he accessorizes. On. Like I could never pull that off in a million years, but he makes it look so cool. And he's got T.O. in the background. He's got T.O. in the photo. Hall of Fame jacket. Yeah. Yeah, yeah two, two gold jackets mm -hmm. right there, you know. I had to be the, you know, the black sheep of that yeah. family right there. You, you which had to balance that with no, no black sheep. You had to balance it out with a good style. Some great buffalo receipt. Oh, wait, wait, right let's there. go back to that one time. 
that day, um, speaking of fashion, I was fr- dressed like that while Fitz was, he had no shirt on at that game. Oh, that was a playoff game? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He we'll had get to that. We'll yeah. get to oh, that. Okay, okay. I, I have a video okay, okay. of that on, on this tablet. Here's another yeah. kind of all black fit. Shout you've got the, the chains, you got the hat, you've got like a black but, a blazer on, you've got the vans. But the most important part, the socks and the shoes. Like how he tucks them into the socks, the shoes, the white and black, the contrast, like with some sort of what hat going story? on. When, like we, so first sweet, met, when we first met at the airport. Yeah. And how did you even notice that I was even going to Buffalo because of the. Is that why? It's because of socks? The socks yeah. that I had on. I had on blue socks, red socks. He's like, hey, you, you going to Buffalo? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm actually going to Buffalo. Hey, I'm Fitzpatrick. I'm going to Buffalo. I'm a quarterback. So you guys actually that met in the airport. Origin. Yeah, that was yeah. the origin That's story. That's the origin right story. When you were reading it of, out of the book, and I, I was like, did this really happen yeah. at an airport? But now I guess yeah. I kind of forgot the socks part. Yeah. It happened yeah. because of his socks. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to. Okay, are those, this those is the kids this two yeah, kiddos. Yeah, yeah. Your 14, two kids, you've got a hat on. You've got some overalls that are kind of like a, a mustardy green, kind of mm. more of a hunter green, mm. I'll say. And then you've got like a mustard yellow I sweatshirt on. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. I, what do you, yeah, what do you think about this? Thing. How do we pull this together? Yeah, that was a comfort thing. Um, I actually didn't want to try hard, so I just got some overalls, some oversized overalls, put that on, drove it to L.A. My son had a volleyball tournament, and I was good to go. So here's what I would say about that. That's a big N.O. for me. <laughs> I think it's not very stylish. However, he's Stevie smiling with his on. kids. Look at, look at his daughter. Like mm-hmm. It's like, how are you comfortable in your own skin? How are you comfortable mm-hmm. in your own clothes? Get I it. can rock whatever, and you I'm still going to be cool. Get like it, That's man. it right there. Yes. All right. Well, you guys both have style, and I want to bring it to today's NFL. What do you think about how these guys – pull their outfits together. Some of the things that you see before games starting when uh, NFL pregame shows are on and you're watching guys walk through the tunnel or walk out of a bus and, and they've got the look together. Do you think it's on another level? And, and Ryan, I know you, you just left the NFL, so not much has changed, but do you think these guys have kind of stepped it up a notch or do you feel like you guys kind of laid the groundwork for where it's at now? A, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. I think they definitely stepped it up a notch. Um, when you say laid the groundwork, I can remember getting fined for wearing a hoodie. Not in Buffalo. It was cool in Buffalo and other places. I got fined for wearing a hoodie under my sport coat. You know, so taking those fines and then speaking back about, like, why are we getting this, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of led the way into the NFL opening it up to, you know, not being so strict. And then with that with that um, happening, I think the guys just got – everybody got their own style, and we're just starting to see it, and I, I love it. I love seeing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do too. And mm-hmm. I do think the NBA had some influence on it too. Absolutely. You see these guys with, like, the sweet fits walking into the games. Um, I, I will say, though, like, I'm okay with just – Look at normal going to a game, but post game is cool to wear. Post something game good. is yeah. cool, yeah. You, you like can't you feel this happened with Joe Burrow a couple years ago where the, he wore this sweet suit on the way in and they lost, and then, and then he, he had to yeah. wear the suit on it's the tough. way out. It's tough. It's tough sometimes when you when you lose, but I mean, yeah. Stevie's I, always going to handle business and have fun. Right, but I don't think I'm going to put the suit on again. I think yeah, no, I think, game I don't think that I missed that perfect pass. Yeah. Like, I think I went back home in my uniform. I said, forget yeah. the clothes. <laughs> at that point, forget the clothes. I'm that, going yeah, home yeah, yeah. in my jersey and my pants. I don't yeah. care about it at all. Yeah. Do we have something good picked out for the desk tomorrow? Um, I actually don't know yet. But, yes, yeah, so usually I've got about four different options that I've already said I like these shirts. So we'll uh, we'll look at it and see what the vibe is tomorrow, and then I'll pick one for I there. think Stevie should should have a say in it. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. Or you, I like your style, too. I like the, the oh, denim. Oh, thanks. You know, the, the Nikes and the we want to be comfortable, but we wanted to also yeah. – like show I know how to I know how to dress cool for the kids because we're at a school assembly Indeed. you know Indeed. the kids know the shoes so right, right. gotta have a little bit of cred out do. there so they can be quiet when I tell them to be quiet yeah precisely that's where it came well, from we'll put it together all right well let's get into the relationship between you guys on the field where and where it all started yeah. so I want to start with the relationship between a quarterback and a wide receiver and really bring it to you two specifically. What do you feel like you guys bring out in each other? Um, I, I felt like to, to start it off, I felt like um, we helped each other, you know, grow in this game with our, uh, I guess, with our star power on the field because without him, 
I wouldn't have had the time to do the things that I was doing, you know. And you know, when with that sacrifice that he made and getting that ball there and me making that play, it just helped. It just helped him. And he, I think, Fitz understood that more than any quarterback that I've ever um, really played with was, hey, the more you do good, the more I'll, I'll, I'll look good. He would never say that last sentence, but he gave everybody opportunities, and I think that makes great quarterbacks when you can throw the ball around and give everybody the opportunity, not, not feel like you're making every play, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I'll say this about Stevie. He's, of all the receivers I played with, he was the most unique receiver, the most unique skill set. And with that, some of the stuff took patience. We could tell him, hey, you're running a three-step slant, the slant might look different nine times out of 10, but I knew that if I gave him patience and I waited on him that he was gonna win. It didn't matter if it was Revis, it didn't matter if it was Richard Sherman, he was gonna win the route. And so I, I think you know, part of his coming out party as he became the receiver that had a thousand yard seasons three times mm -hmm. in a row was he had a coach that believed in him, allowed him the freedom, just like he's talking about dressing up. He had the, somebody that allowed him the freedom on the field and a coach and in a quarterback to be him. And still to this day, people come up to me uh, and ask me about Stevie and what it was like to play with Stevie. And, you know, if you're looking at the top wide receivers of our generation, Stevie's not going to find his way on that list with the media. But when you talk to players, when you talk yeah. to Richard Sherman, when you talk to cornerbacks, they're like, this is the one dude that gave me problems and that I was afraid of going up against. And I think that's a huge compliment to him. Yeah, I mean, you guys spent four years together on the Bills. It was your entire time that you played in Buffalo. And Stevie, you were there for a couple more years before Ryan came to Buffalo. And you had those three seasons from 2010 to 2012 where you had 1,000 yards um, three straight years in a row. And you as a wide receiver, you were an improviser. You were able to do things that not everybody was doing um, in that day and age in the NFL. And I think you look at receivers now and you see a lot more of that, the, the footwork, how you were able to separate the routes that you ran and how you were able to kind of put your own touch on it. And you had a quarterback and Ryan Fitzpatrick was able to understand you and, and get you the ball. And I think we see a lot of that in Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs right now on this team. How do you guys look at what they've been able to do in Buffalo and see similarities in what you guys did when you were in Buffalo, Ryan, I'll, I'll start with you. So I'll say this, like the, the quarterback receiver relationship is really important, mm -hmm. especially the quarterback and the number one X receiver. Right. That dynamic is super important to a team. It's su super important to an offense. So uh, communication is always the biggest thing. And I think you see that that was, that was something that Stevie and I were really good at was the communication of just talking about stuff on the sideline, talking about stuff before the game, after the game, and we really had a deep understanding of each other. So when I look at Josh and I look at Diggs, it's the same thing. You know, the media makes it, you know, up and down relationship, mm -hmm. whatever. They both are passionate. They both want to win, and they're both great communicators with each other. And I think that's where it starts with them, and obviously they're both special players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, to piggyback off of that is – is definitely about that uh, that relationship and that communication that you guys have. I think the main thing, um, mindset-wise, for a receiver, receivers listening out there, um, is, is never the QB fault. Go go into a thing is never his fault. Whatever ball, wherever it goes, you got to make the play for him. You know, and I think that that kept um, kept us kept me solid through a lot of things. Also, just the mindset of it's not on him. It's, it's all on me. You know, me to make the play. He gave us the opportunity. It's on me to make the play. You know. You said communication is such a, a big part of the relationship, relationship between a quarterback and a wide receiver, but is there anything that happens beyond that or including communication behind the scenes that fans don't see that you think not gets misconstrued, but you think that fans you know, should know whether it's the time and effort, whether it's the off the field stuff that, that really happens to be able to create basically magic what we see on Sundays? Yeah, yeah. caring for each other. Like you, you probably we might overlook that part of it. You know, like we really care for each other. I care for him and his family. I care for him as a as a um, as a free agent coming to Buffalo um, to be one of the greatest. You know, and I think he cared the same about about me and my passion to you know be someone in in his league. And um, from there it goes to the putting in the work. You know, putting in a, 
um, the mindset of I have to make this happen. You know, um, th like like Fitz touched on, the media may make it seem like Diggs and Josh are you know a little here and there when it's mm -hmm. an L or whatnot, but. What we see as, as former players, we see love. Like, we see the same thing that, that we had, that passion of Diggs saying, um, get it to me however it is going to be on me. I'll make the play. I'll, I'll make the play. Um, you know, that's, that's the mindset. That's the thing that we, that we have with each other, or most, most players in dynamic duels have with each other. They, they, they first, they care about each other, and they got a passion for, you know, what they're doing. I think that relationship truly does become like family. So mm -hmm. families fight sometimes. I'm looking at uh, A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts, and A.J. Brown is going off on the sideline, and Jalen Hurts, and in the post game, Jalen's like, that's my brother. Like, mm -hmm. it's okay that he yells at me. He's passionate, I'm passionate, I'm competitive. So sometimes the media sees that, and they don't understand the deep relationship, the deep love that quarterbacks and receivers have for each other, or teammates in general have for each other. So there may be some of that fighting, but at the end of the day, you can overcome all of that because you are like family. How has it been to watch the group, to watch the Sean McDermott era, to see Josh Allen come in and then get a wide receiver like Stefan Diggs and then to see the draft picks come in and, and the choices that the GM and Brandon Bean has made? What has it been like to be outside of this organization now and watch it kind of all unfold and come together to – to be where they're at right now, a group that can do whatever they want, really, a yeah. group that can make a run for it, and a group that is capable of winning it all. Stevie, I'll yeah. start with you. Yeah, I feel, I feel, you know, congratulations to the guys out there, but my main um, admiration is for the the fans. I think they deserve, they deserve it. They, they, um, they've been there, supported for us through it all. You know, from day one, um, what we was fighting for. Um, was for their joy, you mm -hmm. know, and now they get to see that for the past, what, four years now? The last, yeah, the past yep. four years, playoffs, you know, um, the all the electricity that, that's going on, which we'll see on Thursday night. But, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely feel like, you know, they, the, the fans earned this. You know, I feel more for the fans than the players. Yeah, it's just been, it's been an amazing tra transition because we, like, we were the no-names when we came in, and it was a bunch of seventh-rounders and undrafted guys out there. Uh, and I do feel, you feel a sense of pride, like, as a Bill, the, like, what we did or tried to do or the groundwork that we laid, but, like, where they're at now. And for me to truly have a quarterback that plays the game the right way and that represents this city to a T, like, it, it couldn't be a better fit with Buffalo and Josh. Mm -hmm. And so... It's so much fun uh, for me, and I know for Stevie, still to feel like we're a small part of this because I think all Bills fans feel that way. Well, you've been able to be a part of it in the crowd, and, and I want to bring up um, a video, and this was at the playoff Legendary. game when the Bills were facing the Patriots. It was super cold, but they got the big dub. 47-17 to 17 was the final score, and it was a perfect game on offense for the uh, Bills. He's seen it before. And, and if, you, if you looked into the crowd or were, you were lucky enough to be sitting in the section, you saw a shirtless Ryan Fitzpatrick with a beanie on and the gloves, and he was loving yes. life. Yes. It, it, you said it was really cold, but it was really, really, really cold. Oh, my God, it was, it was really, cold. Really, really cold that day. So that's the first... That's the first NFL game, other than like a, a Super Bowl, if I brought my kids, that's the first NFL game that I got to go and watch mm -hmm. as a fan. It's actually still technically on the Commanders at that point. <laughs> but, uh, Which makes it even more legendary. Yeah, but I brought, I brought my two boys to that game because I just, I knew how important it was to be there, to experience the vibe of this city, a playoff game, a home playoff game. Mm -hmm. And then Josh goes out and they score seven consecutive times. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to score seven consecutive times, what else do you got to do get but loud. take your shirt off? Mm -hmm. Yes. Of course. What do you guys miss about the game? Do you uh, are you are you in a place where you're like I'm happy I had my my moment and my season? I mean, you were there for a million years. Forever. Forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as competitors, I don't think we ever want to stop playing yeah. the game, you know, or be around the guys, uh, have that, that, that thought of we're about to go to war. We don't know what's going to happen, you know, stepping into the dark. I think that's what get us going, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I can answer that both ways. I definitely wish I was still playing, but at the same time, once I work out with, the, with my, my youngins, I can't even, I can't even last doing that, so I'm cool. I'm cool. I am content doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I think for me it was a nice transition to go straight into this Amazon 
Thursday night stuff because I am part of a different type of team now. But guys that had, you know, former players, guys that also uh, were looking for the same thing. So that camaraderie still exists. And I still, we get to travel and be on site every week. So to get a chance to interact, not just with the players, but the coaches and the equipment guys and the trainers, yeah. it's, it's fun to still be a You're part of it. You're not totally out of it. Yeah. What has that life been to transition to TV from... You're still a part of all the madness on, on Thursdays, yeah. but you're not on the field making the plays. You're getting to talk about it. It's all good, man. I, I mean, it's like 17 years, I think, was it was good for me. <laughs> like, I don't want to say I don't want to say that, like, I'm happy that I got injured at the end. But like, I don't know if I ever would have quit. Like, I just would have kept He's playing. He's going into kept, his 25th yeah. season, just right? Playing, right. Catch right. Catch <laughs> I mean, it's I'm just like, like to that. yeah, man, I, I don't like. I just I love playing the game so much, and this that I had a hip injury in Washington that kind of signaled the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I'm I feel great now. I get to spend a lot more time with my kids, so I'm in a pretty good place. What's it like to turn the TV on and see him on the desk on Thursday nights? Yeah, it's super cool. You know, cause from where we started to where we are now, yeah. it's it's really cool. You know, seeing him on TV, me traveling different states, mm -hmm. reading our book with our partners, like it's. Is, is, is amazing. He's sparking minds on TV. I'm sparking minds in the classroom. With the book and you being on the desk, it's amazing to probably get to see what your teammates get to do after football and after after football ends for you. It's not like life is over after football. And I, I know some people, um, it may take a couple years to figure out what you really want to do, what your next passion is to do, but the book has been amazing. You have a few of them now, mm -hmm. and it's been cool to see kind of how you've been able to make a name for yourself in that way, and then now you've transitioned to life on TV. Um, we're halfway through the season almost. What do you think these guys can do? These guys in blue and red, the mm -hmm. Buffalo Bills of 2023, what are you looking forward to? Uh, I'm looking forward to a, a, a wild game on Thursday. I'm looking forward to us getting back to the, the hunger that we had when Josh was a rookie or second year uh, time. Um, but mainly, I know, we, I feel like we'll get playoffs. Playoffs, that's when everything really begins. You know, we're at that point where we're one of those teams. I feel like we're one of those teams that's, that's, that'll be in the postseason. Um, the guys understand it that they can't just show up and it's being, it's being proven every, every week. But um, I definitely think we're a postseason team and that's when we'll really get the, the action started. Uh, for me, you're gonna have to tune into Thursday night. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to download Everybody. the Prime Video app and watch because okay. I've got lots. You're of You're not opinions. giving any answers. Uh, no, but I do have <laughs> lots of opinions, and I will be picking the Bills to win this game. Yes. We love that. That's what we want to hear. Stevie Fitz, thank you so much for taking the time to fly out here and to come to a classroom for this podcast and this pod. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <It was about laughs> Thanks thank for you. being in Buffalo. Yeah. It's amazing to get to catch up with legends like you guys. I know our fans absolutely love you guys and still love following you. So thank you. thanks for thanks for being on. Thank Appreciate you for having us. Thank you, Matt.